Stick with me to the end because I'm gonna share with you one of the most dangerous things we have ever gotten in a box. Welcome to the Barreto family. My name is Kayla Barreto, and on this channel, we do videos on missions, ministry, and motherhood. And today is another Operation Christmas Child video. And normally, you guys ask me for suggestions, what should I pack in my box? And today, I'm gonna give you guys a little twist on that. And I'm going to tell you a few stories and tell you some things you should not pack in your Operation Christmas Child box. This year we have been doing Operation Christmas Child and the three things that I'm going to show you are things that came in actual Operation Christmas Child boxes. So the first thing that you should avoid sending, or I guess the error that you should avoid making, would be to send a single sock. Yes, that's right. In one of the boxes we got, there was one sock. So with that, just sharing, um, make sure when you do your boxes that you double check and make sure that the things are complete. Um, so yeah, it was kind of, kind of humorous. Um, the little kid showed me, he goes, um, do you guys in the States usually only wear one sock? And I was like, no, honey, we wear, we wear two. And he goes, because I only got one. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I'm sorry, buddy. Well, do you want to keep it? And he goes, honestly, I don't really want to keep it. So he let me have it. Um, but yeah, try to make sure that your socks and your things are complete sets when you send them. So as I'm sharing these things, I also want to give you guys alternatives. So obviously, the alternative to sending one sock would be to send pairs of socks. <laughs> but I will show a couple of finds I found on Amazon that have some fun designs and patterns. Like these are great and they're going to serve the purpose of a sock for those kids. But how cool would it be to also get a fun pair of socks? So I just found a couple of good finds on Amazon. Um, the socks I have a 12 pack of fun ones that um, Amazon sells for anywhere from $7.46 to $18.50, depending on the patterns you choose, that would come out to 62 cents a pair, up to $1.54 a pair, depending on what that cost is. Um, the other option, this is a 12 pack of girls socks and they sell for $12.99 on Amazon, which makes them $1.08 a pair. So if that's something that's of interest to you, I will put those links to those below. And just so you guys know, if you ever purchase anything on my videos that have a link, um, I am an affiliate with Amazon. What that means for you guys is the price is the same. It doesn't cost any more to you guys to purchase using that link that I put below, but I get a little cut of it. I get a percentage of all the sales. So the price you'll notice, if you go search for this 12 pack of girl socks, it's gonna come out to $12.99 no matter how you buy it. But if you happen to choose to buy that and click on the link below when you do, then a percentage of that comes back to us. So, and that helps us to buy Bibles for ministry and things like that. So always, if you guys see links below, if that's something that you purchase and you purchase it with a link, just know that the price doesn't change for you. It just helps out us. So there's that. The next thing to avoid sending, please, please, please avoid sending candy. And if you notice, this candy has little spots of black mold on it. And when this little girl opened this package, she was super excited. And thankfully I saw it and I was like, oh, sweetheart, um, can I see that? And so I kind of explained to her, I was like, unfortunately these boxes have been in transit for a while and this isn't fresh anymore. It's candy and it's not fresh. And she was kind of sad, but then I pulled out a United States granola bar that I had on me. And I was like, I'll trade you a granola bar for it. So thankfully, she was super excited about the chocolate chip goodness and wasn't too sad to lose her little candy beads. But just know, don't send any candy. And I think the reason that this one didn't get found in the packing center, because I know they, they check for that and they know that you're not supposed to send it. My guess is that somebody didn't realize that this was candy. Um, if you didn't grow up using these cute little candy beaded necklaces, I'm sure that to that person it just looked like pony beads. And so they thought it was just beads and they let it slide through. 
but yeah, it's got it's got some good mold on it. So that was not a good option. If you want to send jewelry or jewelry making kits, I found two really great options. So there are bracelet and necklace sets. These are actually made jewelry that you can just throw in the box. It would be great for a two to four year old. Again, it would be two fifty per set. Or if you broke it up into one bracelet for one box and a necklace for another box, it would be even less expensive. Uh, it would come out to about $1.25 per, per item. If you wanted to do, <laughs> Eliana loves, loves the candy that will get thrown in the trash before it accidentally makes it in her mouth. If you wanted a jewelry making kit, I did find this one and I thought it was really cool. So if you packed it as a necklace and a bracelet, it has five necklace um, like chains and five bracelet bands and then a ton of beads. You could put a variety of beads for them to make their own. But if you packed it per set, it would be $3.40 per set. So a bracelet and a necklace in each box would come out to $3.40 per set. Or if you packed it one piece, so you gave a little kit to make their own bracelet um, with a couple of bead options or a little kit to make their own necklace with a couple of bead options, it would come out to $1.70 per set. So if that's something that interests you, again, I will put those make your own kits. Um, the links will be below. And then the very last thing, and this is the thing that I said would be dangerous. <sighs> this is probably the worst item we have ever found in a box. And it was by the grace of God that we found it before a child got it. So like I mentioned, this one, the kid obviously opened and thought it was odd and hilarious. The candy, the child opened. And thankfully, again, I saw it before she ate moldy candy. Um, but this one we actually, actually encountered before the day of the party. So two nights before the party, Thursday night, we had our prayer meeting. And afterwards, we were explaining to a few of our volunteers what was going to happen on Saturday and how we were going to open the boxes and give the boxes to the kids. And so we were explaining to them the best way to open them because we had some exacto knives, but we said that's kind of dangerous. So we're going to open them with child scissors. And so when the kid has the box, you only need to cut one side. And they go, what do you mean you only need to cut one side? And so in order to explain and show, I grabbed the box and I showed them, I said, it's it's a shoe box, so it only opens on one side. You only have to cut the lip to the side that opens. So I cut the lip and the box was stuffed. And so the box kind of popped open. And sitting right on top of the box was a multi-tool. And you might think, okay, how is that the worst thing you've ever found? I wanna read you guys our last two ministry reports. Um, and I hope it doesn't make this video too long, but it's gonna give you a little perspective of why something like this cannot go in boxes. It cannot go in a box. And the reason for that is because in this multi-tool, yeah, there are pliers, which is great. There's a little screwdriver, but along with that, I think this one even has a little flashlight, which is super cool. But along with all of those tools, this particular multi-tool comes with three blades. And I don't know if I can get them out. I got one of them out. So along with this multi-tool comes blades. And there are three different blades in this particular multi-tool. And here's why that's so dangerous and something that cannot be given in an Operation Christmas Child shoebox. Some of the areas where these boxes go, there is gang presence, there are difficult situations. Well, here's our last two ministry reports. So if you guys want to get on our list um, and receive the email updates that we send, it has stories about ministry. I will put um, our email here and our email is also down below in the um, description box. Send us an email and just say, hey, I would love to receive your email updates and we will put you on that list. But here's why I praise God that that box popped open and that we saw this multi-tool sitting on top of the box. Because in the ministry where we serve, we have had a few challenges. So this report was from December. And the title is, Knives and Kids Ministry Don't Mix. At the end of December, we had the opportunity to hold a very special Christmas celebration with the Kids Club in Bosa. 
We had one of the biggest turnouts of the year as our regular attendees invited their neighborhood friends to share in the festivities. This time was full of laughter, joy, games, treats, and a wonderful time in God's word. However, this joy quickly turned to fear as one of the older 14-year-old boys who was invited for his second time got upset with, and I'm not going to say that child's name, with one of our children for cutting in line during one of the games. He pulled out a large knife threatening the other child. Praise God we were able to intervene and nobody got hurt. The other child was one of the first boys that we met at the beginning of the pandemic. He was soft-spoken and eager to learn from God's word. He grew so much in his understanding of who God is as he faithfully completed his Bible study packet every week. However, once we started In-Person Kids Club in September of 2021, this child stopped attending and we lost contact with him. The Christmas party was the first time we had seen him since September and his demeanor had changed drastically. This child has some new friends who are not a good influence and he has begun struggling with anger and trying to fit in with the wrong crowd. Please pray for this child and for each of these kids and youth as they are faced with the daily decision to choose to walk with Christ or to give in to the living like those who are in the world. The neighborhood where we are planting the church and hosting kids club has a huge problem with drugs and gang influence. Our heart is to reach the kids with the gospel so that they will have the tools they need to resist the temptations they face on a daily basis. We hope that this child and each of these kids may have the power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge that they may be filled to measure of all the fullness of God. Ephesians 3, 18 and 19. And I edited it grammatically for plural form. So that was our part of our December newsletter. And part of our, I believe this one was February. The title for this section is, I didn't stab him because. So if that gives you any idea, knives are not a good idea. Please don't send knives. Please, 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 please. We understand multi-tools, but don't send knives. And I won't read this exact one, but what ended up happening is a child got upset at a soccer game and debated pulling out a knife and stabbing another child and went up to Andres after the game and said, I'm going to find what he said. Hello, teacher. I wanted to let you know that I didn't shank him because I know that you are here for us and that you are looking out for the good for us. And I ended this letter by saying, I truly believe that it was the Lord who intervened in this moment and that it was because Andres had been calling out to him throughout the whole game. Andres had been praying that whole game that he was repping. If you ever think about it, pray for us on Saturday afternoons. We are in the midst of a spiritual warfare every Saturday as we teach these kids and youth about Christ. Our hope is that as they continue to learn about the Lord, that they won't just decide not to hurt someone for us, but that they will make that choice because they have begun to understand the love of God. So those are just two parts of our stories. And it goes to show you the danger that could happen if this had gotten into the hands of a child. Because then we're promoting that same aspect or that same um, environment that we're trying to prevent. And if by chance a child had gotten this and had chosen to use it to harm someone or to do something that's not acceptable or even illegal, and the parents asked them, where'd you get the pocket knife? Can you imagine how that would look for us as a ministry or for my husband as the pastor or for us as the volunteers to be like, oh yeah, we got it at the church. Something like this that seems so innocent, so small. I'm sure it was sent with a lot of love and attention and good intentions, but something like this we could not allow to get into the hands of the kids. So I'm very thankful of the 200 boxes that happened to be the one that I opened to demonstrate how to cut open boxes. So um, a good option, instead of sending something like this, I'll put a link up here, would be to send just a tool or a couple of tools 
Um, this particular tool set has four main parts. It has like a wrench, a hammer, a screwdriver. So if you were to split that into four boxes, it would be about $3.36 per box. If you were to put two of those things in a box, then obviously it would cost about $6.72, I believe. So it depends on what you're wanting. Tools are not a problem. Knives and blades are. So just keep that in mind. Um, you never know where these boxes are gonna go. I'm sure in a different area, this wouldn't have been an issue, but I'm very thankful that we saw it before we got that. So those are just three things that we encountered just this year. Moldy candy, knives in the boxes, singular socks, that one's kind of funny. Um, but some of the things that I would say steer clear of, be cautious of, and just a couple of extra ideas. If you wanna check out another video of some tips or tricks for packing boxes that we have given, I will put it over here. And if you guys wanna subscribe so that you don't miss any of our videos in the future, go ahead and click that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell. And we will see you on the next video.